was more comfortable. At least I would get to eat. But that's not how he's called us to live. Mom prayed for me. She said, God, I can't do this anymore. People told me that I was going to die a young death. Everybody gave up on me. Everybody gave up on me. I gave up on me. But an incurable disease because of the lifestyle I was living I lost everything. And he showed me and he showed me you. He showed me your faces. He showed crusades with thousands of people calling on him. So if he can take a demoniac to an evangelist, just think what he can do with it. I want you to pretend like it's just me and you. And think about this question. God forbid. But if today was your last day. If your life was taken today. Do you know for sure that you're going to heaven? Because I didn't. Did you know that I called myself a Christian? I thought I was. But I didn't know him. My lifestyle proved I did not know him. So maybe you're not sure if you were to die, you would go to heaven. Let us pray. Holy Spirit, move. Do what you do best. Fill this place. Fill this village with your presence and with your fire. May the words of my mouth be only your words. And may every ear have an ear to hear what the Spirit of God is saying to them. Flood this place even now with your presence, with your power, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. There's going to be four things that are going to happen this week. Those that feel lost and alone are going to be found and comforted. Salvation has come to your village today. Number two, those that are bound by wicked spirits, those that are bound by the spirit of addiction, it's going to be broken off of their lives. It's going to be broken off of your lives. Those that have loved ones that are bound by wicked spirits and spirit of addiction, it's going to be broken off of their life tonight. People are going to be healed in their bodies. Those that are sick, those that, are that have illness in their body, you are going to be healed tonight because there is nothing too hard for my God. And number four, 
You are going to find your God-given purpose. You are not on this earth just to survive. You are on this earth to thrive and to advance the kingdom of God. I want to open up in the word in Luke chapter 8. In verse 22, it says, let us cross over to the other side of the lake. And this is what the Lord told us. Let us cross over. Shortly there's going to be a storm that the disciples encountered to try to stop them from crossing over. But there was a man named Jesus in their boat. And it doesn't matter what the storm comes against you or tries to stop you. Jesus said, we're going to the other side. So that's where we're going. Things try to stop us from getting here. But we had a word from God. Go to the other side. So we went. And here we are. In verse 26, we find out the reason he's going to the other side. And this reason is for one person. If we came here just for one person, that was enough for me. If it's enough for Jesus, it's enough for me. And this one person is about to have an encounter with Jesus that's going to change his life forever. I believe that I, this is you. And anybody that gets that in their heart that says, this is for me tonight. Do you have a need? Do you need something? Anything at all? Do you need something? Jesus is the answer. Yes, And he's bringing it to you tonight. And if you can say that this is for me tonight. Your need will be answered. Amen. Hallelujah. Somebody say, this is for me. 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 I don't know if you can see So we see that he enters over into the country of the Garadians. Which is opposite of Galilee. Which is where Jesus was from. We've come to the opposite side of where we're from. And when he stepped out of the land, there him met a certain man that the city who had demons for a long time. And he wore no clothes, nor did he live in a house, but in tombs. And when he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell down before him with a loud voice and said, What I have to do with you, Jesus, son of the most high God? This is a demon recognizing Jesus. In James 2, chapter, 9, or chapter 2, 19, 
says even the demons believe in Jesus they know he's real and they know who he is but they still feel in fear and tremble for their day is short and he says I beg of you do not torment me for he had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man for he commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man for it had often seized him seizures are from the devil and there's a deliverance for that and he was kept under guard and bound with chains and shackles and he broke the bonds and was driven by the demon into the wilderness Jesus said what is your name yes he said, Legion, because there's many demons that had entered him. And they begged him that they would not command them to go into the abyss. Let me tell you right now. Demons are scared right now. They are scared right now. Because they know what is about to happen. They know that their time is minutes short. They know that Jesus is on the scene. And they are begging and pleading. Don't cast us out. Don't make us leave. Because the demons know who Jesus is. And it's something that's easy for him. So he cast them out. They went out into a herd of pigs that went over the side. And it says, now the man whom the demons who had departed began to beg him that he might stay with him. 38. But Jesus sent him away. What? Why would Jesus send him away? He just got delivered. He wanted to follow him. You can't go with me. You can't go with me. You have work to do. And you see it in the next chapter, or the next verse. He said, return to your own house and, and tell what great things God has done for you. And he went his way and proclaimed throughout the whole city how great the things Jesus had done for him. The scripture fulfilled in your ears is going to happen for you it's going to happen for your children it's going to happen for your loved ones it's going to happen for your neighbors and then you've got to stay here and your purpose is to go and tell what you've seen and heard tonight and you see, this man was me. I was full of demons. I was making and selling drugs. 
I was in and out of jail over 32 times. I was lost. I could be in a in a place just like this with thousands of people. And I'd feel like I was the only one. I was depressed. I was lonely. And I had no hope. And I believed the lie. That this is how I was going to be forever. So I dove in even deeper. I thought I was going to be the best at this. I was going to sell the most drugs. I was going to be in charge. I believe the lie from the devil. That this was my life. And it will never change. Maybe you're on drugs. Maybe you're not on drugs. But all of us have one thing in common. Before you have a relationship with Jesus, you feel hopeless. You can feel alone. You can feel like nobody sees me. Right? I'm not alone in this. The enemy is the same enemy. From the United States to Rwanda. He's the same everywhere. He, he wants to oppress. He wants to make you live in poverty so that you can't even feed your family. He wants to make you feel like a loser. This is what he does. But Jesus saw this one man that had been cast out of the city. The people didn't even want him near him. So much so that they sent him out into the tombs and bound him with chains. Maybe you're not in a tomb. But maybe you feel like you are. I felt like I was in a prison way before I was actually in prison. I had an incurable disease because of the lifestyle I was living. I lost everything. I remember being out in, in, the, in the outside and it's raining. I have no shelter. I have no one to call. I'd hit rock bottom. Honestly, being in jail was more comfortable. At least I would get to eat. But that's not how he's called us to live. Jesus went over to the other side to meet this one man. The Son of God left the grandstands of heaven to come to the tombs of a demoniac. And I remember being in jail. My mom prayed for me. She said, God, I can't do this anymore. People told me that I was going to die a young death. Everybody gave up on me. Everybody, Everybody gave up on me. I gave up on me. But Jesus did not give up on me. Nineteen year 
years ago. And just a few days from now. I was in my jail cell. It was locked down. It was very tiny space. About this tiny square. There's a toilet in there. Connected to the sink. And there's three others in there. It was tight. <laughs> and Jesus Christ. Not a minister. Not a man or a woman. But Jesus himself. Came into my jail cell. I've seen him with my eyes. I've seen the man with eyes of flames of fire. He said, I choose you. Me? Why me? Why you? Because he loves you. He came to this earth to seek and to save that which was lost. The God of heaven left the grandstands of earth. Heaven. To come to earth. Into my jail cell. Jesus. Yes. The Messiah. Messiah. The Son of God. Came into a dingy cell. To call me. For purpose. For destiny. And I had a choice. Just like you right now. Because he left the grandstands of heaven for you. He's come right now. And he gives you the same choice I had. To choose life or to choose death. To choose blessing or to choose the curse. You see, it's that easy. You get to choose. And I'm here to say, obviously, <laughs> I chose life. And I said yes to Jesus. And I gave him my life. I didn't just repeat a prayer that was void of belief. I gave him my entire life. Maybe you've prayed, prayed a prayer before. Maybe you believe in Jesus. But you haven't given him your entire life. He's asking you to take up your cross. He's asking you to die to yourself. You see, the woman that walked into that jail died that day. And I am a new creation. He made me new. And he wants to do that for you today. The spirit that was inside of me ran. The spirit of addiction was broken off of my life. You see, this is the answer to the drug problem. Jesus set me free. Yes, and I believe that your sister we're going to pray tonight it's the same thing that happened to me is going to happen to her. And she is going to be given purpose. Hallelujah. After I gave my life to Jesus, the fire of God fell on me. You could feel it from the inside out. 
Our God is indeed a consuming fire. And he burned out everything. He burned out everything that does not belong to him. And he purified me. And he made me a vessel of honor. Meat for the master's use. You see the demoniac that Jesus went to the other side to set free stayed back to tell his family what Jesus had done in his life. And he got the entire city saved. God took a demoniac and turned him into an evangelist. God took a demoniac and turned him into an evangelist. You may not be that far. But friend, let me ask you this question. It's a heavy question. And don't miss this moment. Don't be concerned about the people beside you. I want you to pretend like it's just me and you. And think about this question. God forbid. But if today was your last day, if your life was taken today, do you know for sure that you're going to heaven? Because I didn't. Did you know that I called myself a Christian? I thought I was. But I didn't know him. My lifestyle proved I did not know him. So maybe you're not sure if you were to die, you would go to heaven. I have come to I have come over 10,000 kilometers to give you this opportunity right now. I want you to close your eyes. I want you to check your heart. And if this is you, and you need to make Jesus Christ I want you to raise your hand. Now, I want you to raise your hand. 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 Raise Salvation has come to you. Deliverance has come to you. Do not let the devil have any control over your life. Do not let the devil have any control over your life. Do not let the devil have any control over your life. He can keep the alcohol from you. Children, you're not too young to make Jesus your Lord. Over here, over here, I'm speaking to you. Keep your hands up. And I want you to pray this prayer with me. With all of your heart. Out loud. Jesus I believe in you say this with me say it with your mouth out loud say it loud let Jesus hear you you're speaking to him let this come from your heart if you mean business 
business with God. Niba ushaka ko Imana igira n'ubuyagande nawe. Ni Imana nawe So say this right now. Subirana mu nange ya magambo. Jesus. Uvuga ngo Yesu. Come into my heart. Ngwino mu mutima wanje. I believe in you. Ndakwize. I believe you died just for me. Nizera ko wapfuye ku musaraba ku bw'ibyaha byanjye. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Forgive me where I've missed it. And help me live out the purpose for my life. In Jesus' name. Now keep your hands up. Whenever this happens in, in my jail cell, the Holy Spirit fell on me and I began to speak in new tongues. Nobody taught me about this. The Holy Spirit just flooded me and I came too far not to give you the whole package. So right now, Holy Spirit, Begin to pray that out. Church, pray that's it. That's it. That's it. You see, we're getting a, a different spirit out of us. And getting the spirit of God. Hallelujah. 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 After I gave my life to Christ, he told me I was called to the ministry. He showed me consecutively of what I would be doing. And at the very end, I've been serving Jesus for 19 years. At the very end of this vision, he showed me. He showed me you. He showed me your faces. He showed crusades with thousands of people calling on him. So if he can take a demoniac to an evangelist, just think what he can do with you. You were called for a purpose. And you can't go with us. But go tell your family. Get your family saved. Go find the drug addicts on the street. And get them delivered. And don't stop until this entire town is saved. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You just and I could feel dizzy. Wow. But it's all gone now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Here, bend over. Bend over your back. Woo. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on. This is this, this is what healed people do. In Jesus' name, Father, thank you. Put the anointing of heaven on top of her head and the soles of her feet in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are healed, man. That spirit of infirmity is broken off your body. And it will never come back on you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Let's rejoice. 
Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you. Imani Thank you, Lord. Pastor Jeremy. Pastor Jeremy. For three years. This lady has been crippled. She couldn't bend your leg. She couldn't walk. But now, they... Wow, wow, tell them that. For three years. I've been walking on crutches for three years. Wow. Wow, let me see you. Let me see you dance. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Ma'am, Jesus Christ has healed you tonight. God bless you in Jesus' name. This lady, Ooh. Pastor Jeremy Umugore, for 10 years had tense headache. And suddenly tonight, Jesus Christ came upon her and took that headache away. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! I had a headache for 10 years, but right now I've received my healing in Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! She used to take pills. She used to take medication every day. I used to pray every day. And when I would feel hungry, it would even be worse. But I give God the glory this evening. The Lord revealed His light as I was standing there. And the power fell upon me. I had pain in my stomach. But now I am healed. Jesus has healed me. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. I want to tell you. I want to tell you. I want to tell you that while I was preaching, I saw the spirit of infirmity break off heads. That devil's cast off your body. And it's not coming back in Jesus' name. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Praise you, Jesus! Everyone say hallelujah! Hallelujah! Come on, give Jesus the praise tonight. Thank you, Lord, oh, Jesus. Pastor Jeremy, this lady's name is Berta. Berta. She's called Berta. And for three years she suffered from a breast and back issues and terrible pain. I felt something moving in my back, lower back. But right now as you were praying, I felt it being lifted off. I praise God that I've even had pain, severe pain when my when I was breastfeeding my child. But right now I'm not feeling that pain anymore. Hallelujah! 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 Say, Jesus, you are wonderful. Jesus, you are great. 
Jesus and she felt the spirit of God come upon her and set her free hallelujah hallelujah Woo. Woo. Hallelujah. So you felt the power of God touch you tonight. God started revealing himself yesterday because I even went to church. I was born again back in the days. And then I backslid and became drug addicted. I would drink alcohol and become like a crazy person. And sometimes it would even be worse. But today I feel the Holy Spirit has come upon me. And I'm no longer doing that ever again. Hallelujah. 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 That addiction is broken off your life. I had a problem with my kidney. I could feel pain, but now I don't feel pain anymore. And I had ulcers. I had severe ulcers. But right now I can't feel the pain anymore. Hallelujah! 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 So you were deaf in both your ears. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, so both your ears. Hallelujah. Say thank you, Jesus. Russell, what's going on? Pastor Jeremy. Pastor Jeremy has just spent his whole life in this wheelchair. His whole he's, life. He's never walked. I don't know how long. 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 I
Uyu mugabo mureba hii ni ushe ya mbele Tonight marks the beginning. And the first step. In the miracle power of God working in your life. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Listen, we're just getting started. We will be here tomorrow. And we'll be here Sunday night. This is just the beginning. Bring your friends and family. And receive the power of God this week. Who's going to be here tomorrow? Who's going to bring somebody with you? Hallelujah.